Hey everyone, welcome back. I've had a lot of people asking about this stone, how to do it. Uh, so I'm going to show you that on the tutorial now, how to do this little kind of like firework, but it's got movement and swirls off the end here. So that's what we're going to do today. I might change up the color a little bit and see what we can create out of that. So stick with me, that's what we're going to paint. Okay. So the center of the other stone was done with an oil paint that I just kind of poured on. You can use pipettes or I'm just going to use a kind of a dotting tool to scoop it out and put it in the place that I want it. These paints are from a company in France called PBO and they're the ones that make the neat effects. So it does take a little while to dry though so I'll paint it on here and then give it a chance to dry and then we'll start the mandala. Alright, so I think we're going to go with a fun purple one to do here. And so I'm going to make the center violet of the Prisme paints. And I'm just scooping it out with a dotting tool because I want it to stay on my stone. Oops, I'm going to have to make the center a little bit bigger. Too busy talking, I'm not paying attention to where I'm dripping. There. So that's gonna need a little while to dry and I gotta make sure it stays where I want it to. And then we can do our design around it. Okay, so we're getting to a point where I think it's going to stay where it is. It's drying, but you can see the, de the development of the cells in the oil paint. And I think what I will do instead of brushes for this tutorial, I'll use dotting tools, the stylus dotting tools with the ball on the end um, to show you how to do this. Because I know a lot of people have been asking um, if I can show more videos with how to use the tools because that's what a lot of people are using. So. I am going to try that today for this stone. So I'm going to pick out some more purples here and some other colors to do our firework with motion here. Alright, so I think to start off with the first round, so for the first round of that, that'll be the white pearl. And you're going to want to grab a dotting tool that's decently small on the end. So I have this one here. And these are bent because I bent them. They didn't buy them that way. I have a video in my list here that you can look, check it out on how to bend your own video. I mean, on how to bend your own video. How to bend your own tools, um, paint brushes, and the dotting tools. So I bent this one. They don't come that way. I don't know if you can find them that way, but this one is bent because of me. So I. Alright, so we're going to start off with our same idea of starting a mandala where you make the plus sign, top, bottom, left, right, which is probably different on my video because of the camera angle. I don't use tools that often, so bear with me. I'm still learning about how much paint to put on and... So that was a 90 degrees, then these are 45. And you could draw guidelines on your stone if you needed, if you wanted to make sure you got the spacing exact or closer to where you would need it if you have trouble spacing it out. So you could just kind of, I have this called my etcher where I broke off a piece. And the background here is black, so I could always just etch in. I could get a ruler and do it too. And this way, I don't have to erase pencil lines, it would just be the background where I just dampen my finger after, or the varnish actually erases the lines, but you can just erase it with a little bit of water. But if you wanted the guidelines to help, you could always draw those in, because some people really find that helpful. Personally, I have trouble with them. I find them a little confining and I get stressed about trying to stay within the lines. <laughs> so, whichever works for you, 
you should do and that'll be easier for the design that you're doing. So that was the white pearl and then I have this nice Americana it makes a buttermilk color that's really nice. Just barely yellow vanilla type and that's those dots are gonna go in between the pearl dots that we just made. I'm not really pressing it down on the stone. I kind of just let the paint drip off the tool and it'll make a nice circle for you especially if your paint consistency is the right consistency if it's more um, fluid. You don't want to use really thick paints to make dots because it's a little more difficult and gets frustrating. Okay, so maybe that's a better angle to have my camera here for you so you can see. I just don't want to move the stone too much because the center is still wet and if you tilt the oil paints they'll just run right off the piece you're working on. So we don't want that to happen. Alright, so the last one I did was buttermilk and now I have a soft coral that I'm going to do. I actually just changed my mind, sorry. I'm going to do the bright coral first because I want to keep it in order and do a larger dot above the pearl dot that we did and then we'll use the light coral, soft coral over the buttermilk. So I hope some of you don't have trouble following it because sometimes I just go with how I think and I just talk out loud with what I'm thinking and change my mind sometimes. So. Hopefully there's no problem with following what's going on. So I'm doing the bright coral. And I'm using one of the dotting tools that's a little bit bigger on the end. I might even have to go a little bit. Oh, I think I got enough paint that I can do it. So I get a really good amount on it. And you just kind of, I don't actually push it down on the stone. I don't, I'm not sure how some people do it, but personally I don't. I just kind of gently let it drip off the tool and then let gravity kind of do the work for you with the tools or with the paint rather it just wants to pull a fluid into a circle And if it doesn't want to go in a circle, the paints you're using are difficult, you can also just push it around a little bit and bully it into place. <laughs> just kind of make sure that you make a circle. Like this one here, didn't. I don't know if it's the stone or what, but it didn't go into a circle. So I'm just going to kind of edge it out a little bit and then it made more of a circle. Alright, now for the soft coral, which was the lighter peachy color. I'm just going to go with the smallest dotting tool I have, which is actually my etcher. So whatever your smallest, smallest, smallest is. And I'm just going to do two dots in between the dark coral that we did. Okay. 
So Deco Art Americana also makes this really pretty blue harbor, which is kind of like a periwinkle, I guess is the color I'm looking for in my mind. Um, blue and purple together, it's just really, really pretty. So I'm gonna do that for the next color and go bigger. It's gonna go above the soft coral that we just painted. And I'm gonna make it with the largest dotting tool that I have. And I'm sorry, I don't know the sizes of these millimeter wise. Somebody did ask that, but I don't have any idea. I guess I could try to measure it here. Give you a rough idea. So maybe three? Three millimeters? I'm not even sure how they measure the stylus ends. <laughs> so, but it's about that in width. And I'm gonna do the blue harbor. Alright, so I'm just getting a pretty big amount on because I want a decent sized dot to go on there. So I'm having a teen painting session here today too, so. Alright, blue harbor with a larger dot. Because we're gonna be able to do our dots around this one, the graduated dots, and then our swipes. See what we can fit on the stone. Another thing I didn't think about with this stone, I don't think I said the measurements of it, so I'm gonna. Just do a quick measure. It's about four and a half inches in length. And then width wise, we're at three inches. So four and a half by three. And you should be able to fit this design on there. Okay. So I think we'll go from light purple to dark purple around our blue harbor color. So we have a nice lavender here. And I'm just going to go with the smallest tool I have. And you start off with a big dot because of the amount of paint, but as you work your way around, the paint comes off the tool and you have less and less and less, so you get that graduated effect with the dots getting smaller. stone because I usually try to keep the spot that I'm working on right in front of me. It's just easier and and I can see what I'm doing. To. I want to avoid hitting my camera set up here, so. so I'm just going all the way around with the lavender.
and it's been about an hour or so now, so thankfully that center dot is not moving too much. Okay, so the next color I am going to use is bright purple, but I'm just going to go halfway around the dots. Still using the smaller, smaller dotting tool. And that paint's a little thinner, so you can see it makes a little bit of a bigger dot because it's spreading out a little more. Okay, I think I'm just going to tuck the stone under here. I think I'm going to go with this purple metallic. It's a purple pearl for our next round. So sometimes too it's hard, you know, coming up with a color combination. I don't know if any of you struggle with that, but one thing I found helpful sometimes that when I get stuck, and I'm using the next size up dotting tool, I probably should say that, um, just to go a little bigger. But if I get stuck with what to do for colors, sometimes I will go to like the Pantone website and see what the colors this year are for fashion. They have a whole palette that they usually post. P-A-N-T-O-N-E. Um, or I'll just kind of look at different color palettes at um, like on paint strips that you can get at the hardware store. I used to collect them. I was kind of obsessed with interior design when I was younger so I used to collect the paint strips just to see the graduation and colors and some of them will even give you a color scheme like if you want to do an entire room it gives you maybe like a dark green for the wall and a buttermilk for the trim or a cream white or white for the ceiling and you know green light green trim so it sometimes will give you an idea of what colors they think look decent together um, and that way you kind of in can experiment and get some practice in on combining colors that maybe you weren't necessarily going to do before. Sometimes I get hooked on some colors and I don't 
realize it and then I start to look at the past work that I've done after over a little period of time and I'm like wow purple tur turquoise and green purple turquoise and green purple turquoise and green I guess I better start looking for other color combinations <laughs> so the other day somebody suggested red white and blue since Independence Day is coming up well duh I don't know why I didn't think of that but red never pops into my head as a color to use so so sometimes it just takes some experimentation too and a lot of times it's personal preference, a lot of times it's what mood am I in? You know the sand and sea ones always I gravitate towards these colors. The metallics <clears throat> excuse me. But it I think it just depends on what you feel like painting too. Sometimes if you're not in the mood to paint it, it's a lot less enjoyable to paint something if you're not really excited about the colors. I'm always interested in where the little adventure is going to go now as I don't use them, the palettes that often anymore. Like I said, just usually if I get stuck. So, But that's usually what I just start with is a color combination in my mind. And it never ever looks the way I meant for it to <laughs> <laughs> to look because I inevitably will end up adding other colors or deciding I didn't want to do that or change it up completely or highlight it differently so just what you're in the mood for all right so I did dark now I think I want to brighten it up just a little bit all the dark purple um, I have this deep magenta so it's got a hint of pink in with some purple and I'm going to do one more row of dots, I think. Yep, I can fit. One more row of dots in there. And I'm going to use the same size dotting tool, which is like the second smallest I have. And just go around those pearl, purple ones that we just did. And you can see the pearl ones are a bit bigger. They are the metallic paints. They're a bit thicker. And I'm actually using less paint on this one just to kind of change up the design a little bit. So that's another thing you can do as well to give it a different look is your sizing of your dots. And it's a similar, you know, you're using the purple shades we're using. This has purple in it so it ties in but it also has a little bit of the contrast because I have some pink in there. This is one of the things that I have a hard time with with the tools is the constant need to reload paint as well. I know a lot of you are used to that but with the brushes I find that I need to dip it a lot less to reload the paint. You can just work one entire strip usually but again, that's just preference. It takes some practice working with different tools, no matter what you're using. So, Oh, I'm glad I did that. I like the contrast of that. And see, sometimes I'll be like, oh, well, okay, I shouldn't have picked that one. Or if it's really offensive, Sometimes I'll just take my background paint and paint over it. So you're not locked in forever. I mean, in the ones in between, it's a little more dicey trying to get to them if you want to erase them, so to speak. So it's better to decide before you start putting ones around them. But if you have to, you have to. You can always take black paint and actually just dot over those ones or just completely blot out a whole section and redo it but rather than having to redo the whole stone there okay so now I think it is time for some swipes dot drags I guess you'd call them with the dotting tools and I want to tie in some of these orangey and yellows that we used at the beginning to the outskirts of our um, design as well. So, 
see, do I want to use the pearl? The pearl, the metallic, does not, it's difficult to get a good drag out of it. It spreads thin quick and then you have to go over it, so it's a little more difficult. Not impossible, nothing's impossible, but it is a little more challenging to work with. I think I might just go with the buttermilk. And do a swipe with that. So now the thing with the dotting tools is depending on how much space you have to go, say we're going from here to here. Now I need enough paint on the tool that's going to start the drag and actually make it all the way, pretty much. There's a little way we can trick, trick it into going farther, but for the most part you want to try to get it a good sized tool and get a good amount on the tool enough to drag it around. So for instance, it, let's just say I was going to use this one. Maybe I should grab a piece of paper and we'll do it on there. Okay, so I just have a piece of paper here and I'll choose a darker color here so you can see it on the paper. But this will kind of give you an idea if you haven't seen any of my other videos with the tools. I'm using a smaller one and I'm getting a good amount on there like that. And you're just going to start at the top of your dot or your design and then drag it out to where you want it to go. And so this one, because it's bent, actually holds a little more paint. Let me see if I can find one that I haven't, I'll use the other end that I haven't bent. And I'll try to drag it as far as that one. So, because that's a bigger ball, then it actually holds enough paint to go the whole way. So that works too. But when you get into the bigger size ones, like this, sometimes they go f fatter at the beginning, and they don't want to drag for a really long time. So a little trick that you can do with that for the tail is take one of your dotting tools that's smaller, like the first one we used, or the etcher, my etcher. I like to use that sometimes. So the smaller tool and just take paint from the beginning and you can actually drag your tail out a little longer. So don't lose heart if it doesn't go all the way around. There are ways to finagle it so that it'll go. The etcher here on the smaller ones you can drag while it's still, it's already drying. That's impressive. But you can just kind of drag them out a little farther if you need to. So if you like it to stay thin the whole way, that's what you could do is use a smaller tool and then just keep dipping it and kind of dragging it out. This is a little messy because I'm rushing it, but you get the idea. And the thing about the swipe, swoop, dot drag and all that too that I always like to mention is that people feel like you have to do it quick. You don't. You just can take your time and pull it into the positions that you need it to go. So you can even do a little bit of different designs with it. Say this one, you wanted to do a little heart design. Then you can do that. You just have to take your time. pull the paint. So there's different things you can add for flourishes for designs all around your mandala and it'll change it up each time which is great because then you have a different design every time. So my biggest suggestion to people who are new to this is just experiment. Try new stuff. Try adding an arrow. Try adding a triangle. Try whatever shape pops into your head and then just do it all the way around so you'll keep the symmetry of your design. Alright, now with all that being said I have to decide how much paint I can get to go around there or what size tool I need rather <laughs> to get the paint to go around because I like to try to do it in an amount where I don't have to swipe it too many times because you saw it like on the paper you have to constantly kind of go over it so it does can get a little messy and you don't want to do that either if you don't have to so I 
think this size probably. So it's the other end of the green. I don't know if these are all universal either, so it's a little bit smaller, you can see. But it's not as small as the smallest tool. So I'm going to grab some of the buttermilk color that we used for our yellowy cream color. And then I'm just going to start at the top here. And I can tell already there's not enough on there. So, but that just comes with practice. And then I'm just going to slowly pull it down to the center of that design. And the dotting tools work pretty decently. Decent to get a good drag. So, a good swipe, good comma stroke, teardrop, whatever you want to call them. And so I dipped this twice to get all the way around the purples. But that just comes with doing it so much. You know, you learn how much, like when you start to put this down on the thing, and I start to pull on it and realize there's not enough paint to go around, then I can just dip it again. And slowly go around until you get the end of your tail. And I think actually too, to be honest, with the dotting tools, it seems like the, if you want the skinny tail at the end, these are a little easier to work with than brushes. Brushes, you have to push down hard and then kind of let up and flip the end. So, but these, you know, your your paint starts to run out by the time that you get to the end of a tail. At the end of that swipe, it's already started to get skinnier because you're, you've lost so much paint off the tool. So, it's kind of a neat trick. Sorry, I keep picking at this. I think there was something in the paint or something on the stone. I'm not sure what happened there, but it keeps distracting me. <laughs> All right, so again, I'm dipping it twice, but I kind of like the, the thinner swipe, so I'm using the same size tool. And that one didn't go as far as I would want it to. So I'm gonna grab my tiny etcher just kind of dip it and start where it's about that thickness and just kind of help it along a little bit but you can see it does sometimes get a little messier so that takes some practice too I'm just messing around with it but one of the benefits yet again I know I say this all the time about having a background a lot of time I love the natural stones but some of these stones are ugly so painting it black, you can fix that. Say I made the tail too fat. You could go over it with a small brush or one of your dotting tools with the black again and just go in there and reshape it to the size tail that you want. Just take the black and literally just thin it down on the tail end. Or a small end of the dotting tool. Take the black and just thin it down. So double dip, put the dot, and drag it out. I love these swipes because it really just adds so much movement. And for a firework, or a flower, or a pinwheel, it's just, it's perfect for this design. Okay. So, now I need a coral color. Do I want to use one of these corals? These are kind of orangey. I want something maybe a little more pinkish. Just to tie in with the purple a little bit, bring in the orange coral idea. Okay, perfect. So I have bright salmon. So you can see it's a little pinkish, a little orangish coral. So it's, this is their Americana's Bright Salmon. And we will use that for the next swipe, round of swipes here. And I'm going to stick with the same size tool. 
Am I? We were gonna do this design here. Um. Yeah, I am. All right. So the only thing I'm gonna change up is we're not gonna go in alignment with the other one. We're just gonna go off center a little bit to where your first drag starts to thin out a little bit is where we're gonna start the second swipe here. So on each of them, we're just gonna start it off center to just kind of create that additional movement that we want. All right, so I got a good amount on here. And this one, actually, I think this is one of the multi-surface. Yeah, it is. So I love these paints, don't get me wrong. They just are a little different to work with. The multi-surface ones sometimes are thicker And it's an interesting consistency because they're thicker, but they don't necessarily stay full body on a brush or a tool. So I did dip this one twice as well, but you can see the thickness is more. So it made the tail thicker at the end. Which is fine. I'm, I kind of like it. And just as long, you know, you just kind of do the same thing on each... I was talking to somebody the other day about the mathematics. Okay, see that tail went skinnier, but it's not the end of the world because it doesn't really ruin the design that much. And if I want to, I can always just thin that one out. We'll see how it looks once I get all the way around. Some might go fat, some might go skinny. But I was talking to somebody about the mathematics, how, you know, you're in school and you're always like, I'm never going to use this subject again. <laughs> And then here we are talking 90 degree angles and 45 degree angles and equations because you want to balance one side. So whatever you do to one side, you do the other side and then that keeps your balance, equality, and your symmetry. And I'm busy yakking. So on this one, I already dried it out. So my tails, I'm going to have to let up a little and go to a smaller one just to help the tail out because I got talking and the dot started to dry but those are things too that you'll learn as you go along with the paints how much time in between with drying how far they'll drag out how much space you need in between each so also too you can pull in chemistry if you wanted and some people are like, oh, for crying out loud. But the oil paints, and when you do acrylic pouring, like the center paint here, it relies on the density of the paints as far as making cells and what you're mixing with it, because this paint has petroleum in with it. And that's what helps make the cells and gives it that look, which I think PBO, the company that makes that paint, actually calls it, uh, where is it? A hammered look? No. What does it call it? Oh, honeycomb effect. So that's their honeycomb effect. But really that's physics with that and chemistry. You know, which one is denser, which one mixes with what, why they don't mix, like oil and water. This little fireworks come along. Nice and bright. Alright. And I think... I'm debating whether or not... I'm talking it through in my head here. Whether or not I want to do a darker purple here. Oh, I just got blue on it. If I want to do a darker purple. Or if I want to do a lighter purple. Because these are both lighter, brighter of the colors. Do I want to make it darker? Or do I want to stick with the light? I feel like I want to make it darker just to kind of pull in the darks that we used. But then which one do I use? I don't know. I gotta think about it for a second. Some other little tricks I'll use I just want to show you because this is what I'm thinking. So I'll actually hold the paint bottle next to the design to just kind of hold the colors next to one another to see. 
and sometimes too even when I'm picking out my color palette I'll just put all the bottoms of my paints next to one another line them up and see if I want them in that order do I like them next to each other so it's really just what's aesthetically pleasing to myself <laughs> um, so I'm really thankful that other people are liking the color combinations because sometimes I'm, I'm just well, going with what I really like at that point in time so um, I'm thinking I might actually go with light now that I got this next to it because if we put a dark one in here, you run the risk of it getting subdued and just blending into your other dots that we've already done with the dark. And then we use the lighter one here, so if we do the light up top too, it'll help pull out the, the design. So I am going to go with the lavender, I think. I think. No, I am. <laughs> so I'm actually pouring quite a bit in my well just so I can get quite a bit on the... Um, the dotting tool. And I'm going to stick with the same size. This one's a little gooey. It's another thing too is, I'm not sure if any of you have children, but you have to make sure you close your paints. You know what, I'm going to go with a smaller dotting tool now that I think about it, because there's less distance. Less distance around that we have to go, so I'm going to pare it down a little to the smaller one. But, yeah, I was saying, I don't know if some of you have children, but our paints get left open every now and then, and then you get these thick, thick chunks in your paint because it was open to the air. See, it's a little thicker because it's bent, but if you're using yours not bent, then you can still use the tail. And I'm going, just like we did on the other one, halfway down your design, the other swoop, swipe, halfway down, and that one I didn't get enough on. I'm actually going to show you this. <clears throat> I don't like this one. It's too fat for me. <laughs> so I'm actually just going to brush the excess paint off with a liner brush until it's flat. Ooh, almost just stuck it in my coffee. And then I'm going to let that dry, and I'm going to grab some of my background color, which is black. Like I said, you know, I'm not perfect with any of this or the dotting tools, definitely not the dotting tools. Um, so you're going to kind of learn ways to make it work for yourself, how to fix things that you didn't want to have happen, which I'm hoping that's helpful that I show you all. I hate to call them mistakes, because you could make it go in a different direction, or really it doesn't mess up the design, I just like to have them a little more uniform as you go around the design. And that one came out a little chunky, but if I had gone chunky all the way around it would have been fine, but then these tails started coming out a little bit nicer. and. So it changed my mind. So too, if you catch it while it was wet, it's a little easier to scrape the paint off to redo the design, but it's not the end of the world because if it has already dried and say you've gone back to it a day later, you can always just scrape it off with something or sand it down with some sandpaper or some people said they've actually used alcohol on a Q-tip and it's come off. Um, personally, I have not done that, so I can't speak to that. I'm just a lot of people have given me some helpful hints, and I'm just trying to pass those along as options. Some I've tried, some I haven't, but this is just how I usually try to fix that, because the black will blend back in, and then we'll just go over it with the purple again after I come around. I 
I'm glad we went with the lighter. And here where I got the blue. I didn't do that very well, did I? I got blue from it, so I'm just going to paint it over with the black. Oh, there's a dot of purple too. See, when you're up close and personal with your design too, sometimes I've had to walk away and come back to a piece because I get frustrated. You're so close and you're like, oh, that's not a perfect dot. Or, oh, I only got nine dots around that side and ten on this side. And, you know, that has eleven all the way around, but this one only has eight. I mean, there may be some people who are out there counting and it really would frustrate them so they could change up their design, but I personally, after when you come back, you think, wow, that actually looks really nice because you're not, you haven't been sitting there for an hour with it in your face going, oh, this, this design isn't good or this dot's not a perfect circle, whatever it is that's bugging you about it, you can fix it, change it to how you want it, or you can come back to it and it's usually not as bad as you think. I've messed up royally on spacing sometimes and I've had shown it to people in the classes that I teach and say, hey, can you show me where the mistake is? And they'll stare at it and they're even looking for a mistake. They'll stare and stare and stare and, well, I don't see a mistake. They, they look pretty, you know, so here I am, you know, you think in your own head that I made a mess of this and there's this huge design flaw and other people don't see it. They just see a pretty piece of art that you've created. And they're not looking for the flaw. Like, we're flaw, excuse me. We're our own worst critics. So go easy on yourself. Walk away and come back to it. You see, there's like chunks in this paint. It got left out. Left open. See how gross that is? Ugh. <laughs> anyway. I hope you get a good laugh. I hope you get a good idea for how to paint and be relaxed and not, it's not what other people think. Don't get frustrated with your design. Try not to be confined by lines. Just enjoy your little mini journey with your stone. And if you don't like that one, next time do a different color design or a different color scheme or a different, you know try different experiments with different designs. Put a triangle, put, like I said, arrows, S's, whatever you feel like you want to try at the time. This is still a little wet, so I'm kind of pushing the envelope here with trying to go back over it, but I'm going to go for it and see. Yep, see, I shouldn't, I should have just been patient, but that's okay. There. Alright. Our little guy's coming along pretty nice. So I think what we'll do is while that is drying. Okay. So I think we'll be able to t put some more movement on this by adding show on this one. Adding in these swirls here to kind of give it that like it's moving. So and when I do a different design like this too I like to sometimes etch it out so that is helpful but like I said you don't have to be confined by the lines if you're painting it out and it seems like it's not gonna fit or if some of your dots end up bigger than others, then you can always change it. And I'm just eyeballing the spacing and everything just to kind of check it out and see what it looks like. And the thing with the etching, too, is you can always just stamp in your finger and erase it. And it is gone. So 
Well, I kind of wanted to just put it down a little farther, I think. I think I'm just going to use the white pearl to do the streaks here. I want it with more arch. Yeah, I kind of like that better. A little more delicate. Let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to re-etch those on and just kind of arc it a little more. It's a little more decorative. Okay, so where is it? I said I was going to use the white pearl. And I'm just going to go with the pink small end of the dotting tool. And I kind of like the graduated effect on these as well. So the dots that I start off with here are a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to let it run out as I get to the ends, just to kind of give it that more delicate effect. And you can see I'm not necessarily following the lines that I've drawn. I just wanted to get an idea for the spacing around it. And then do I want it, you know, like the arc. I wanted it a little more arced on this one. It just looked nicer, so. So I know this video is a little bit longer because the dotting tools do take a little bit longer. I hope that you're all enjoying it and make it to the end here. I usually try to post the sped up versions on Instagram, so if you're just looking to see the design done quickly and not have it as a tutorial and you get on Instagram and my Facebook page. My Facebook page is P4. Miranda Patron also. So the sped up versions are on there if you just want to see the culmination of the piece where from start to finish usually I post those on there because I kind of like watching them too. I like to see other people do their art and have it start to finish just go through quick. So it's not necessarily a tutorial on those with the step-by-step -step instructions but that way you can still see I just find it kind of satisfying seeing the culmination of a piece, seeing it created from start to finish, and then how it develops, and I just think it's amazing. Because I'm not necessarily going to go out and start woodworking, but there's some amazing videos on there where they show start to finish something they've designed out of wood, or, you know, even the paint pours, which I'm, I started to do a few of things like that, just checking them out and seeing people's development of their pieces. It's amazing. Jewelry, metal fab, welding, all sorts of cool stuff on there. Yay, that came out pretty cute. And I think also to kind of give it that effect of a firework, what I'm going to do is add some dots 
just kind of sparking out, like sparks, you know, coming out the ends of our spiral. Um, so, do I want to match the colors of the ones we use to kind of do that? I think, I think you can match the colors or even go a little bit lighter with your colors. That might... What do I want to do? I think I'll go a little bit lighter. So, the buttermilk is already decently light, so I'm probably just going to... Okay, so it was a minor issue. My phone camera I've been using for this video just shut down. So, <laughs> I was hoping it saved everything, which it did, thank goodness. Um, I think where I was saying was we're going to use little dots at the end of these to make them look like sparks coming out of the firework and I'm gonna go with lighter lighter shades of the colors we use but the buttermilk is already decently light so I'm just gonna use the pearl white that we had that's actually too big I don't want it big ones I want them to look like little tiny sparks so I'm gonna go with the tiny little etcher that I have to just kind of throw a couple little dots at the end just like that to look like it has a little bit of sparkle spark to it and they don't have to be perfect you know sparks are haphazard just kind of toss them on there and one two three And a lighter version of this would be that soft coral. So just a couple little sparks for that soft coral. And the only thing I have lighter than that lavender I use is this apple barrel lavender. So I can use that. <coughs> or I can mix a little water in with it. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Yeah, what are you doing? You say hi? You say hi? They hide all the people watching the video? Mm. Mm. Say bye. Bye. Good job. The ever busy home. <laughs> Gotta love them, right? Alright, so the light purple. Lavender sachet for the end of our sparkles here. Another thing you can do too is highlight your swipes or you could even just do a totally different color. It would make it way more colorful design. But this lighter sachet purple, I could just take on a smaller dotting tool than I used. Here, I'll just show it. And then all you do is just add on a little bit of highlight to the one that you've already put down. And you could do that on all the the dark purple ones if you wanted, just to kind of give it a little highlight aspect. One thing you do have to make sure is that it's decently dry before you do that. But that's just another thing that can add some dimension and depth to your 
piece is adding highlights and just kind of make it like a... You're building up. Looks a little more 3D. And my house is starting to get noisy here, so... <laughs> Alright, sorry for the noisy house. So, we added our sparkles and then you can see the highlights that I did on the purple. But you could do that on all of your swipes if you wanted. Or even add highlight dots to your other dots here. You could do lighter, darker, something different on those. But those are just a few ideas to change your design a little bit. So, I hope you enjoyed painting this with me today. If you like my video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any other things for comments or constructive feedback or ideas for future videos, please feel free to leave feedback in the comments and let me know what you think. Uh, if you're looking for my other videos, they're all on my channel. Um, unless you're looking for the sped up versions, which are on my Instagram. They're less than a minute start to finish pieces. Those are on my Instagram, which is P4 Miranda Patron. Or my Facebook page, which is the same name. So I hope you all have a great day and happy painting.